I'm Kathy Johnson, and welcome to Town Talk. I have my guest with me today is Amelia Gilbert. Amelia is here uh, representing the Ella T. Grasso uh, Regional Home. Is that correct? Center. Center. Okay. Ella T. Grasso a Regional Center on Ella Grasso Boulevard. Yes, in Stratford. Uh, now, Ella and I, I want to tell my audience before we start, fasten your seatbelts. This is going to be a bumpy ride. You've got two mothers uh, of brain injury survivors or can mentally, I just... Yeah, mentally, yeah, physically mentally, challenged. Mentally, physically challenged here. And uh, we're very outspoken women and this is going to be a fun interview, I, I assure you. Uh, so, e Emmy, um, give me an overview of what's happening at the home and why you're here today. First thing is, Leloy, please don't close our home, Ella Grasso Regional Center. Yeah, uh, stay up there. Malloy, and there's a picture of Malloy on your t-shirt. Does it say please? No. Oh, I don't, I'm, I'm glad. Don't close our home. And then it says Ella, Ella Grasso um, uh, Regional Center. Um, Jerry's Printing in Bridgeport is the one that did this shirt, in case anybody would like any shirts done. All right. He does a very good job, as you can see. In Bridgeport, Jerry? Jerry yeah, uh, Jerry's Printing. Jerry's Printing in Bridgeport. Scott Fisher uh, runs, runs the company. All right. So go ahead, uh, uh, Emmy. Uh, what say you? Uh, I have not been able to get answers why they're closing El Grasso Regional Center and wanting to ship only 19 of the clients to um, Norwalk, which is, the, which is the sister campus, because El Grasso Regional Center has 49 beds open, where uh, Lower Fairfield County only has 19 beds open. Uh, Grasso has, has uh, 29 clients there, so we could really house uh, Lower Fairfield County's uh, clients, which is uh, 50, uh, into El Grasso, which is more uh, uh, centralized. El Grasso's units were only closed last year and this year, where the units which have to be open at Lower Fairfield County uh, regional Center have been closed for four years so that means uh, in the budget where there's no money they have to clean the area they have to have the uh, electricity heat water uh, air uh, um, air call? conditioning air conditioning and air uh, purifying uh, cleaned so I, I don't see where they're they're uh, saving money um, El Grasso is in uh, central uh, of uh, Stratford or, or Connecticut. We have an indoor pool heated, so it could be used all year, where Lower Fairfield County has an outdoor pool heated, but only could be used seasonally. Uh, Grasso is within walking distance of uh, stores, so I can't understand why Stratford isn't screaming uh, because it's going to be taking money away from those stores. Um, just there's there's a terrible picture here, and every time we ask, um, they tell us, well, you know, we don't know. They're not giving us true financial right. um, budgets. Uh, first of all, Grasso has all of the caseworkers there, so the budget that they're giving us is that the budget with the caseworkers, or is that just the budget of what it takes to run Grasso? Um, also, we asked, well, um, is this the, the figure before um, Medicaid, Medicare pays their half, or is this budget that you're giving us after Medicaid, mm -hmm. Medicare uh, gives their half? Um, yeah, so. they, we have rights, and we're being crushed. It's, they're going to move. And that's it. Um, us parents have, all of us parents at Grasso have uh, filed um, that we do not agree 
And we're just ask, asking why, uh, because we don't see a financial savings. Um, we don't see, uh, you know, and, and they won't, like I said, they will not give us the true figures. Um, it's, it's right. So, so um, uh, what our audience has to know is uh, you have a son that lives there. Yes. And, and, and he, how many years has he lived there? Um, on and off, 30 years. He, he did the, um, um, the respite, and then when I came down with the cancer, um, I placed him in 2000. Yes, there's been problems at Grasso, but we've, we've worked it out. Now, they want to, now, Malloy wants to privatize. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see, he may save money in his budget if he privatizes, but it's going to put more of an expense with the parents. Because when you have problems with the state of Connecticut, you pick up the phone and there's congressmen, senators, and representatives, and even the governor's office and the attorney general's office to call and put in your complaints. If you're privatized, you have to have enough money to hire an attorney to go after the, the private sector uh, to get things straightened out. Mm -hmm. um, here's another thing that was brought to my attention uh, by a, a reputable uh, person. Um, Ella Ella Grasso does have overtime, mm -hmm. but the overtime at Lower Fairfield County is worse. Um, I, 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 I see apples and oranges. I, I cannot understand um, why he picked uh, Ella Grasso yeah. to close. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we have more pluses than negatives. You know. Uh, uh, Emmy, that's one of the questions we're all asking, uh, uh, why he's picking certain places to close, and, uh, and, and, and the money doesn't add up to us. Uh, I I've, haven't had a clear picture of it myself. I think the concern here is that, um, uh, from a mother's point of view, I would say to you, and you can, is that this is where you're comfortable, your son, this is his home. To uproot him would be very disruptive, would it not? Uh, yes, um, they're not, they're not looking at my son at, with emotional problems or health problems. They're looking at my son because they've never come down to into the him. trenches. Yeah. Right. Um, they're just looking at him as a green wriggly dollar bill and a statistic. Right. Um, they don't understand he's human. Slap him, he cries, stab him, he bleeds. Uh, right, right. Uh, and, and that hurts. Um, they're looking at all people with mental and physical uh, disabilities, and that goes for DDS and DSS, as just a statistic. And right. And last time I was up in Hartford, I said to him, uh, why don't you come down into the trenches and put a face to that statistic, to that dollar bill? Right. They didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you and I are very outspoken women when we go up there, and I would remind our, our, listening, our listeners today who happen to flip through their channels and find us, uh, I would remind them that we are mothers of survivors and that um, we don't care if we are called crazy. We don't care if we're, we're told that we should be nicer. We don't care if we criticize the governor. Uh, he certainly knew when he became governor that he would have to grow a thick skin when you're, when you're a legislator or a politician. And it, uh, um, I, I, I just feel that... Um, uh, I'm very disappointed in what he's done in Connecticut and what he's done to the disabled and those, the, those who are the least among us. Well, he's hitting, he's, he seems to be hitting the people he feels has no voice, uh, can't vote for him, and doesn't pay taxes. Right. That's, that's what I see. Right. Um, over these years, I have looked into many of the private uh, facilities, and they do not offer uh, Michael what he needs medically um, as he's getting older. Um, this is one of the things why uh, I'm up at arms. Uh, private, uh, first of all, ARC, who uh, keeps saying that they want everything privatized. Who's ARC? Um, American. Something, they're, 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 yeah. are they outside? They're, 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 they're a private, and they yeah. have uh, places all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel that, uh, uh, El Grasso is an institution. It's not. It's come a long way, and it's Michael's extended home, and it has been his extended home since 2000. 
um, I've looked at a lot of private facilities. Um, they don't have 24-hour nursing. Um, their staff is comes in and out. Um, uh, where Grasso's staff is more stable, um, they don't. Uh, they're having a care provider look at the clients, and, and if they feel that they're sick or something, then they call the nurse. Then a nurse comes in and looks at the client and says, yes, I think so. Then the nurse calls the doctor, and then the doctor comes in and looks, and then he decides whether the client has to go to the hospital. By then, he could be dead. Well, that's right. Isn't that ridiculous? Isn't that absolutely ridiculous that, that, that uh, you, you, you can't, it has to be like that? Everybody, the most important people, the most knowledgeable people are the ones that see the patient last. That, is that ridiculous? Also, um, I, I don't see where there's the savings. Michael's already been, is one of the clients that have been put up on the auction block and sold like a slave. Nobody in the private sector wants him because of his, as he gets older, he has these certain health problems. Um, also, the, they're saying that it costs this much to take care of Michael, and the state of Connecticut won't give him that amount. So they're not going to touch him. So where does Michael go? He has to stay with the state. Now, somebody would say to you, uh, Emmy, well, why don't you just take him home with you? Oh, I had that said to me. Yes, and, I, and, and I, you know, because that's what people who just don't understand our age and what you've gone through and all, easier said than done. But I want you to answer that. Um, I told them if you put a ramp in the front and a ramp in the back, uh, you got out my bathroom so I have a step-in tub and uh, a shower stall, um, I would need, uh, because of my health problems and my back from a car accident, I would need somebody there in the morning to help me get it ready for his day program and get him out to his day program. And then I would need somebody there when he came home. And I, and I would need somebody there um, to help me get him dressed and go to bed. I don't bend like I used to because I've got five bulging discs and a, and a ruptured disc. Um, I have uh, no thyroid, so I do have problems uh, with that health. And then we're mixing medications. I take so much medication, he takes so much medication. Right. <laughs> and you could both make a mistake. Oh boy, can we? Yes, yes. Um, so that's the other problem. Um, the state will not give me enough of money to have what I have, have to have done. Um, and when it comes time that I, you know, have to lay down because my levels are not right, uh, what do I do? Tie our sneakers together and have them lay down with me so I know I can't run through right. the house? Right, right, right. So this is something that you need for a for him to have a, 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 a quality of life and yourself to have in, 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 a, in a, a certain quality of life. How can, and you love your son, so, you know, it, it, they put you in such a terrible position. Well, it? he's not only destroying Michael's quality of life, right. he's also destroying my quality of life. Our governor is, yes. Yes. Malloy. And he's also hurting um, these, the day programs that our, our, our children go to because he moves. Now, I've already looked into it with uh, Beth DeJourney, who runs the adult uh, program for St. Vincent's Changing Images. I asked her, if, he move, if he's moved to, to Norwalk, do you have um, a day program for him? And she says, no. And uh, do you, can you get one up and running? Again, it comes down to finances. So that means uh, he'll have to be traveling on the Mayor Parkway um, every morning in that wonderful traffic to go from Norwalk to uh, Stratford where his day program is. So he's also impacting uh, the client's day, day programs. Oh my goodness. So he's, he's, he's hitting a lot of people uh, with a lot of problems and everybody's scrambling because he's looking at our kids as a statistic and a green, yeah, and yes. a green and wrinkly dollar bill. Um, and this is, this is what gets me crazy. He was in the DDS, or was it the DSS 
uh, at growing up because he's dyslexic. So that well, well the, the Boston University did rise to the occasion, and he said this in his stump speech, which I, I campaigned for Governor Malloy. I knocked on doors and made phone calls. And I also heard his stump speech three times, and he made no bones about the fact that he was dyslexic and that the University of Boston rose to the occasion by putting things on tape for him and all so that he could be the best human being he could be, that he could be given the opportunity uh, to be uh, the bright man that he is, and he's an attorney, he could uh, succeed in life. And really, isn't that all we as mothers are asking for our children, for, this, for them to, to have the tools to live the best life they can live under the circumstances? I, I, I know it. I, I often say that they're creating human puppy mills for our children. Oh, I agree with you 100 percent. The out of sight, out of mind, and uh, they, hey, they've got three hots and a cot. They're okay, right? That's all. And then the average citizen can go away. They, I can. Well, the people watching this show can go home and say, "We are a very moral nation. We care about the least among us." After all, her son has three hots and a cot, and it's all nice. Does he have the health care? Does he, does he have the ability to stay in a place that he knows is home? Do you have peace of mind? Who cares? We don't see him. And you know what? We didn't have to pay so many taxes. That's human nature. Yeah, but they're also going to have to realize they're getting older, and he's going he's gonna to just keep going down the line. So that I think I, he's already hit hospitals. Right. I, I see the next stop, step to convalescent homes. So all these people that go home and go, he's got three meals and a cot, they better think twice because they're getting older. They're getting older too. Yes. That's right because if you don't have, I learned this a long time ago having worked in healthcare for 46 years myself. I'm retired from Yale University School of Medicine and I learned a long time ago if you don't have an advocate and you don't have someone visiting you and by the way during the summers I was a nurse's aide. Those people don't get the care in many of the places that they would get if you visited the person on a daily basis. They are human puppy mills. And believe me, the, they're lucky if a doctor sees them before an aide looks at them first, and then the next one looks at them, and then the next one. And if they pass away in a convalescent home, oh, well, they were old anyway. I know that sounds cynical, but I, I've seen it. So, It's the truth. It's, it's the, truth the truth. It's the truth as we live it and we see it. That's right. Unfortunately, but uh, um, over the years, they've come up with so many ideas like a, one time they uh, wanted to place all of the clients in convalescent homes. Well, my son doesn't belong in a convalescent right. home and it's it's not fair to the people who are in the convalescent home. Uh, you know some of these kids screech or they act out and that's not fair. You, no it's not the place. Uh, and. Uh, Michael does not belong in a group home because I have not found a group home that's conducive to what uh, he has at uh, El Grasso Regional Center. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm still trying to figure out, and I cannot get from uh, the people, why they would close El Grasso when it, when it has so many more perks. Yeah. You know, dollars and cents, uh, we can't figure it out. The, the, the parents are constantly uh, wondering uh, what it is because, like I said, they're going to have to move all of the uh, case managers uh, who take care of all the regions. Again, I, I asked why we had four, the, Connecticut was cut into four. They've gotten r rid of one of the sections, so now Connecticut is cut into three. Uh, I can't understand why they can't con cut Connecticut into two and get and get rid of, rid of one section. The same way, like in your budget, the right, you With, they're privatizing the independent living, uh, the, the uh, social workers. They're privatizing my son's social workers, and as I said, uh, uh, it's a blind alley we're going down, and and it's and. Um, uh, it's frightening. Uh, we don't know what to expect, and uh, I don't know whether some of the. Quite frankly, you know what I said, uh, Emmy? Uh, I said, uh, does um, do some of these private places that are taking the, 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 these uh, jobs, 
Uh, does the governor owe them favors? Is this one of these things that's going on that we're picking and choosing certain places that are going to get these clients not caring about how they'll be treated or what? And we don't see that they're saving that much money uh, privatizing uh, 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 um, uh, the social workers uh, for the waiver programs of brain injury. But I'll tell you this much, um, they got their way anyway. We fought, but they got their way anyway. But please continue, uh, because I only bring it up because it dovetails off of what you're speaking of. It's the same scenario. Well, one of the corruptions that I saw when I went up to, to Harvard to talk about not putting Michael into a convalescent home, um, I was told by one of the, the representatives that uh, four of the people, that uh, the representatives that were sitting on the committee owned many convalescent homes, so I was taken yeah. Buckos out of their pockets. That's right. That's right. Follow uh, the money. Yeah. Why, you wonder why uh, we're having such a, a big upheaval for the next presidential election? Follow the money. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it, it's that old saying um, uh, uh, in that movie, I, 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 I'm fed up and I'm not going to take it. We're not going to take it anymore. Uh, you know, we've all, everybody's had enough all the way down the line. What bothers me is that the middle, more of the middle class are not standing up and going, you came in and your budget was okay, and in a year and a half, you bankrupt us. Because where's the money? Where's the money? That's right. Well, listen, uh, most people are busy with their lives. Most people are um, uh, uh, enjoying bread in a circus, that is the TV and a bag of potato chips or whatever. I'm just as good. We're, most people are not paying attention until it changes their life personally. And until that happens, they're happy campers. Find a family who doesn't have a mother or father that's getting old. Right. Find a family that's somewhere in the family somebody isn't mentally or physically challenged or right. been brain injury from, you know, during their life. Um, it's, it's hit, I, I, I the, the amount of people that haven't had a disaster it's got to be small yeah. got to be small yeah uh, so why isn't so why isn't the other uh, two-thirds standing up and, and fighting uh, you got a voice you got laws use it uh, don't you know d or you're gonna lose it yes um, yeah you have to stand up and be part part of it you've got to step into the arena and want to make the change you know you asked a question and and and, and I, I'll answer you what I think you know uh, Emmy, you and I are both mothers. Any woman out there that's a mother that is, knows that you're, you'll fight to the death for your child, okay? A lot of people out there either aren't caring about the elderly or they're not thinking about it or they're wrapped up in their own life or they can't face it and all. But it's a strange thing about you and I because I've met you for a while and, and, and I've been up there. We fight like mother polar bears. <laughs> we let them have it, don't we? I tell we, you, nothing's more more dangerous than a, than a female with cubs. That's right. And as, as much as my cub is 41 and yours is in his 30s, they're still ours. And we'll fight to the death to protect them. And this is what our legislators have to understand, and this is what the governor has to understand. We're out here fighting. And my, I, um, my hat goes off to you that you are standing here fighting the way you are. At our age, and at the point we're at in our life, did we need this? No. We no. didn't need it. Um, this is another thing, um, and I, I, I got a hit below the belt. Please. Um, I was raised Roman Catholic. They don't believe in abortions. But when Michael was born, I didn't see my religion coming forward and helping me. I struggled. We struggled all by ourselves. Um, he was born with his disability? Yes. They yeah. dropped, him, dropped him in my lap and told me he wasn't going to live to be six months old. Uh, That's how much they Isn't know. that wonderful that, what to hear? Yeah. Um, I don't see the Catholic Church standing up and, and saying, Malloy, stop this genocide. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and I don't, you know, if we're not allowed to make the decision of keeping them or, or uh, getting rid of the pregnancy, then they have no right to interfere into my life. Right. If they were marching along with me and they were going to meetings with me and saying, you can't do this. This is not what God put us down on the earth for. 
then they have the right to, to say what they say. But in, until then, they didn't, they weren't holding my son. They weren't going to meetings and fighting with the school systems to, and digging up laws in the law library to, to make sure that he has what we all want, quality of life. Right, right. Uh, life, liberty, and this pursuit of happiness. And you can't have that if you don't have a decent place to live, some clothes on your back, and some food. I don't know how you can pursue happiness if you're starving and being abused. That's it. Isn't that it in a nutshell? Yeah, and um, a lot of these people that have brain injury and that are being um, worked with through the proper channels, they're not in jail, they're not being drug dealers, they're not have high school no. chases, no. they're not shooting at the police department. No, they're just... So they're a I look at them as a plus, not a minus. Mm -hmm. And I feel very strongly that, uh, this is a little bit off the subject, but uh, when you graduate high school, um, you either go to college, a training school, or you go into the military. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel very strong on that and your taxes should pay to help these kids get uh, a good education in one of those three departments. Mm -hmm. Europe does it mm -hmm. and uh, yeah they do pay they do pay more taxes. Well now you're going now now there are people out there Emmy that are going to just say that uh, you're a bleeding heart liberal and that you just want uh, somebody to take care of you and uh, uh, what I would say to that is, actually, we didn't buy into this. Uh, one day we woke up and found out that the only thing left to us, unless we had millions of dollars, and we, I could have sold everything I owned and never have afforded my son's health care. So I, we had no choice but to accept what was offered on, uh, on the table. And, and I, I, like you, I've been navigating the system for years. I'd like to know who gets to cheat on it, because every time I turn around, I either have to hire a lawyer or I have to uh, jump through hoops to explain that my son will never not my son will always have a brain injury and your son will always be what he is and I don't understand uh, but for you know this is what we're up against as you said you even now you're having to hire lawyers over this mm -hmm. and another thought I wanted to say to you to give you some food for thought you know it's it just dawns on me and when we were talking before uh, the street is named El Grasso Boulevard, El Grasso uh, home. Uh, I remember El Grasso. She did a if lot. If she for were us. sitting at this table with us today, she would have fit right in because she took no prisoners and she cared about those that were the least among us. We, they named a whole boulevard after her, and she d did not hide from the public, did she? No. Uh, Malloy hides. He hides in his little closet up there, and well, he should hide. She wouldn't hide. I think if Ella were sitting with us today, and, and, and uh, she would be ashamed. It'd be a slap in the face. It would be a slap in her face. Slap in the face. Um, I've been called many things. I haven't been called a, a, a bleeding heart liberal. Um, you either pay taxes for services, or the taxes are lowered so that you have enough money to take so, uh, care of so, what you need. Right. And the value of the dollar is shot right now. Thanks to the high rollers and the businesses that went out of this country, uh, the minimum wage used to be able to feed a family Not years anymore. ago. N now, now we've got crony capitalism. I didn't want to get into that because this is about your son. But the point is, we're not looking for handouts here. We're looking for a change in our government and a change in thinking. And obviously, the only thing that I've noticed is most, not all, politicians are looking to win the next election and that's all they're looking at. There are some good ones out there, I'll give you that, but basically how far have we gotten? Uh, now tell me what you're doing now. What, what, what's going on now? Again, look, I understand about downsizing. I understand that the, the money isn't there, but somewhere along the line you came in with money and you used it improperly and now you're hitting um, the people that you feel have no voice. Right. All right. Even if you close these regions down, you still have to maintain uh, the campuses. So I don't see where you're, you're saving money. Better to downsize. Again, I have mentioned that. Um, what are you going to do with that property? Sooner or later, you're going to sell it. 
So I, I, you're not going to the, t you, in other words, you're not doing, running a business. Uh, you should be running the government like a business. You should be sitting down and going, I have this amount of property. I have to close down this section. I could give you this property to build on at a, at a, at a reasonable amount. You can make newer cottages or keeping the, the facilities that are on there so the kids have a place to live and call their extended home. You could build your homes, your, your uh, offices, and your businesses and bring them in. It would be a plus to the towns. Um, it would be a plus to the, so um, the state would not maintain the buildings. They would only have to maintain the clients and the care providers. Um, it's, it's better for the clients because they're getting into um, the uh, community. Um, that was, am I allowed to say it, pissing against the wind? Uh, yeah, they, you can say what you want. They what thought the, I was. That's right. We're, we're in a quandary. Now, you mentioned that you have a legal case. Now, your group, you're representing the group today. I'm uh, one of the representatives. One, one There's three of us. Three of you. And you're going after this legally now. You, you have a, a re retained an attorney. We're, uh, no, we haven't retained her yet. We're, oh. we're, we have certain steps to go through um, to prove our case before she can step in and file. Okay. So we're, we're, still, we're still up here, and she's way down here. We have a lot of work to do. Um, the parents, all the parents have got to pull together. And we'll take parents um, who are up in Meriden and Hamden. If they want to join with us, you don't have to necessarily have your, your uh, child at El Grasso Regional Center. We cannot get lower Fairfield County's parents to pull in with us because somewhere, somehow, they've got guaranteed that they're not going to close. They've either swung with ARC or or made some kind of agreement with Malloy, they should really be pulling in with us because they should also be fighting to keep their... That's right. They, yeah. yeah. They, they shouldn't forget about those that were passed over. Well, they have. Well, that's wrong. When I was told that, don't worry, your son's been on the program a long time, he won't get booted off or anything, I said, why should... So my son got filet mignon because he was in the right place at the right time, and I'm supposed to turn my back on the others who are going to get oatmeal? I can't do that. Can we do that? We can't do no. that. Well, no. Well, what they will do is uh, split us so we'll fight among, um, among ourselves. No, we have to stand united. Where do I bring my sign and where do I, are we going to pick it? Shall oh, yeah. Go, shall we walk outside, Ella? See the T-shirt? Okay. That's what the kids are going to be wearing. The day, the day you're walking outside there, I will get my T-shirt and I'll have my sign and I will be marching in front of Ella Grasso with you because I'm more of an activist and a radical than I am a politician, quite honestly, and I'm a mother first. I'll be with you. We've got to stand up. We have rights. We have a voice. Mm -hmm. People, you got to get your ass off the couch. Um, you could take your beer with you and your potato chips, but you've got to get up. You've got to tell them, uh, this, is, this is not working and we're not happy with it. You're, we're paying taxes and we're not getting our services. There's, there's something wrong with this. You will bring in immigrants who never paid taxes. Right. We'll hit our education budget. Right. We'll hit uh, our, our Section 8. We'll hit our food stamps. Uh, we'll hit, uh, what do you call, uh, electrical and, uh, right. uh, and heating. Uh, heating and all, the school yeah. systems, right? Didn't the Bible say something about take care of your people first before you can right. help others? Um, he, he should have stopped that immediately and used that money um, uh, to help with the budget. I mean, other states said no. He knew we were bankrupt, and yet he went and did it anyways. Right. Uh, to me, that's a dictator. That's not democracy. No. He's, he's telling us... Uh, do as I say, not as I do. People, well, get up, get moving. Well, this, make, yeah. make those phone calls, calls yeah. fax, email, yeah. right. uh, uh, you know, write letters. Come down to Hartford and tell them this, this is not floating. 
Right. You have rights. Right. You have a voice. That's what everybody's fought to give you those laws. My dad and my uncles fought for your rights. I'm certainly sure you got somebody in your family that put their life on the line for sure. your rights. Sure. Use them. You're sure. going to lose them if you don't. Sure. Um, you just got to say, uh, and I'm, I'm telling you, if he's hitting the people that are mentally and physically challenged, I see it coming. He's going to start hitting the old age. He's already hit the budget for schools. Right. Bridgeport's getting nothing. Bridgeport yes. is a city. Yeah, Oxford. Oxford just lost over three hundred thousand. Uh, it's going to, uh, although our mill rate's going to be lower than the last one. Uh, uh, the board of finance is going to have to rig that around because uh, what what Malloy just did by taking more money has just changed the mill rate by a few points again. So you know, I, I mean, he is taking away from everything, as you said. So it's going to come out of your pocket again. Again, and 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 you know. Uh, it, it's a dilemma. Now, if people want to learn more about your group, um, is there a way they can, can they go online or can they, can they call you? Do you have a phone number? Um, my house number with an answering machine is 203-374-0025. I will take your name, your number, what's a good time to call, and I will get you to, to uh, the three of us. Each one is handling something. I will get you to the right person. My cell number with a voicemail is 203-331-3916. Again, you leave your name uh, and a telephone number and, I, and what, what you need, and I will make sure that I get one of the three of us to contact you. Um, but again, people, you're not looking at the whole picture. Mm -hmm. um, this goes bigger, yes. Yeah, this, th and you got my cousin was trained for this and this was her education. She sees five to seven years until the economy starts. We will never be 100% again, but we will be within the 80%. It went down when he came in mm -hmm. and his people, who our tax money pays their salaries, this, as soon as he came in, he should have started chopping heads and, and tightening budgets. He didn't. We flatlined. That's when we went bankruptcy. Now it's starting to come up slowly, but it's going to be five to seven years before it gets mm -hmm. anywhere near up where it was when he came in. Thank God he didn't have control of my checking account because I'd be a bag lady by now. <laughs> Honest to God, I mean, my girlfriend tells me I'm, I'm cheap because I, I use my tea bags twice and if you buy Bigelow tea, you can use them four times and I wash out my plastic bags. I keep telling, and I still use coupons when I grocery shop. I keep telling her I'm frugal. You're frugal, that's yeah. right. Uh, time for the uh, government to start getting frugal. Yeah, but not, but not with the least among us, and that's what bothers me. Uh, uh, the Democrat Party, I used to feel, and m uh, Governors of the Democrat, uh, was the party uh, who, who cared about those in need. I don't see anything like that anymore. I, I don't see... Uh, I, I, I see a change, and, and heaven only knows what's going to happen in this next election. Um, is there, if people, um, if people call El Grasso, the building, can they get your name also from them? Or um, I did say yes. I would. I would rather have the calls come into my house to make sure I'm getting them. Yeah. That's why I'm set up with an answering machine yeah. and voicemail. Yeah, because I'm worried that if, if people can't remember or didn't take down your number, if, if they remember El Grasso, uh, um, say the home again. Uh, El Grasso Re Regional Center. El Grasso Regional Center, they'll at least know that they can call there and get your name or something, you know, ask for you, how to get a hold of you. Um, they could they could leave a name and number. I will have to notify Grasso that uh, these calls are going to come in. If you want to do that, I mean, yeah. I, we'll see. You can but reach me one way or another. The other thing is, uh, they know, the audience knows me. Uh, if you get me on Facebook, Kathy Johnson Town Talk or whatever, you you get get it to me. Uh, I certainly uh, can let. Emmy, no. There you go. And Emmy, you tell me when you're going to have your little protest march and all. You know, I'm good at that. Right now, we're working on a, a Saturday. 
um, and um, Joanne is working with the radio station, so we, we d don't have a definite date. Okay. But I did get the t-shirts uh, for the kids to wear, and uh, there was a little problem with uh, allowing the radio stations to uh, come on the property. They've ar oh, already they're starting, huh? Um, well, the, the radio, uh, the, the, one of the TV stations came on, came on the property, and they were told, go get lost. Um, so we uh, hope we went through the right um, people, and as I said, Joanne is handling that, and uh, they agreed that they can come into Unit B. And people are going to see what the what my son's extended home looks like. Yeah, that's very good. They're, they, no, no, they they would be very wise to allow all of us to to speak our mind and and go there and have our protest because uh, I don't think they want to look like they're turning away. Uh, uh, go ahead, take me to jail. See, yeah, take this 68 year old woman to jail <laughs> because she was trying to protect her son's. Uh, uh, quality of life. And uh, well, is, is the saying, uh, if Mohammed won't come, to, uh, if Mohammed won't come to the mountain, the mountain will go to Mohammed. Yeah, That's, you know. yeah we, we, we just whatever that is. And, um, and uh, I like that, I like what the protesters used to stay, say uh, when they didn't want to go to the, well, that was the first big thing we were, the, uh, the, the young kids that went to college, uh, my generation, we protested the Vietnam War, many of us. And they would say, say, hell no, we won't go. You better believe so, that. <laughs> so maybe we should put a, a button on your son that says, hell no, well, I, I wanna, won't go. I wanted that on the T-shirt. And they said, no, he can't wear that T-shirt. He can't <laughs> wear that T-shirt. Oh, that's right. We have to show a degree of decorum. Yes. We, we have to act like grown-ups. Yes. I don't know whether we have to act like grown-ups, Emmy. I mean, after all, I, I, I mean, if, you know, Sometimes you just have to slap people across the face to get their attention. Well, the representatives now are all new. They're all young. Yes. They all have children. Uh, they're, uh, on one of the committees, there were three out of the 11 people on the committee who have children with problems. They didn't really get into it. but they. So you know what we're going through. I couldn't understand why you didn't fight harder. Because because it's a culture throughout politics, because I am an elected official myself, I'll, I'll admit that on camera, but there's a culture there where um, the parties want to stick together. If it comes down from the top, and, and then they have to see what their constituents will say, and they have to weigh out if they're going to win the next election, there's a, there's a lot going into it. I, I know it's very hard. It's very hard when I run. To, to, to be honest and, and stick to your convictions and, and that and still get reelected because the voter is very unforgiving. If they don't get what they want, they, they, they've, you know, sometimes you have to be pragmatic. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I said this to you before, I'll tell you what's pragmatic. Pragmatic is that they, they have to win the next election. And, and, and that's what they're thinking about. That, that's the practical thing. They have to think about what they have to do to win the next election to get there. Well, if they get their, their, their uh, name out there and they fight f for people's rights, right? that's a plus. It's it, when they do the sneaky stuff. Yeah, but, they're, but they're not going to do that because if you notice, when we went up to Hartford, I'll give you a scenario. We stood in front of the legislators one time uh, when we fought the first time, my group, uh, for privatizing the social workers for brain injury survivors. We went up there, and there looked like three people, that, uh, legislators, that were leaning our way. Well, the governor sent people down. Uh, uh, word got to the governor's office, you might lose this battle. They sent people down to the caucus to strong arm the people that were holding out. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's, it's done that way. There are legislators who want to stand their ground, but then they're pressured by their party, too, and they're pressured by a lot of other things. So um, uh, uh, the truth is that they all eat breakfast together and that if the governor were a Republican, we'd have all the Democrats rooting for us, but the governor is a Democrat, so we have a lot of Republicans that are in our corner. Now, some speak from their heart. I, I think I counted about three of them that I believe are really speaking from their heart. But most of them, in my opinion, are trying to survive and keep their gig in Hartford.
and get reelected and make their party be reelected. That's what it's about. And sometimes they need people like us, and I think they're starting to appreciate us a little bit, Emmy. I think that, well, maybe a little bit, or at least they're going through the motions. At least this time when I got up to speak, they actually asked me a question or made a comment. Usually they dismiss me like, oh, please, not her again. But you know what? The point is I think they understand that we, we, have, we have a place at that table. We have a voice at that table. We, we, yes, are activists when we have to be. And yes, we are fighting for our children, our loved ones, our parents, uh, who, whom, whoever. So they have to understand that. And in, and in Hartford, they're kind of protected. They don't get this a lot up there. They're, they're in those walls. They're briefed before they come into the room. They already know what they're going to do. Most people are not interested. They don't go up there as a hobby to see what, what, what's happening in Hartford. They're eating their lunch. They're chewing gum. They're on their cell phones. Uh, it's business. They're not used to an issue like this where we come in. Um, uh, with a, with with, with uh, uh, both guns blazing. Well, you said we we have to be adults about this. Uh, yet I've been up to Hartford three times and was absolutely mortified that the representatives could speak. There's three types of people. There's uh, the private sector that is, uh, that's tried to hold. I was up there for the uh, D yes, DSS yes. and and the yep. DDS budget. There's the very knowledgeable people that really can embarrass them. Um, there's the families that are begging, and then there's us that are crazy. Yeah. They think we're crazy. I know. I don't mind having that term crazy. I That's was fine. absolutely mortified that a couple of representatives went after the families viciously. Yes. I, I, did they forget that our tax money pays their salaries? You're telling me I got to be an adult and I have to get abused by these people? Well, they have to learn to take criticism. If you took that office, that's the Listen, you, 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 you have to the, face, it's, it's part, part of Part of the job. You got to roll with the punches. But that they, they, some of the things that they said to these parents who were trying to explain to them, and yes, they were emotional. Heartbreak. I, I, I was mortified. Yep, and it happened the first time we were there. Uh, it, it happened, but we, we were very tenacious. Um, uh, how's it go? We had a lot of mendacity, audacity, and tenacity. We went up there with both guns blazing because, honestly, it's what has to happen sometimes to be heard. And then you can get the people with the gravitas to come in, explain it all, and, and get to a point where once you've got their attention, maybe they'll listen a little bit. But the truth of the matter is we lost. It's going privatized. I don't know what's going to happen with El Grasso. I've learned that you ask for an inch. They will give you a fingernail, a little tiny fingernail spe speck, and then in the end they'll take that away too. It's a losing battle, and what we do as parents and, and, and myself, I'll speak for myself, what I do, I go up there and I listen to everybody that has all this time to speak and state their case, and we sit there with our little hats in our hand and wait for our three minutes to speak and hope we can get it out of our mouths before the bell goes off, knowing that basically the decision's already been made. This is why we're having the kind of presidential election we are having right now. Thank God it's the United States. It looks like it'll be a bloodless revolution. Um, I'll, I'll give you back the floor because this is what we're... Well, the first time I went up, you were right. Their minds were already set because they were laughing and texting, and I call her the butterfly. There was one particular representative who was the butterfly. She was, yeah, she was talking to this one. Happy, woman, smiling. she was talking to that one. Oh, it's just a joke. And I'm going, what the, you know? Yeah. Uh, Here this, I am, important. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is how you uh, sit down and, 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 you know, work at the table. Um, she was having a good time. Oh, uh, yeah. This, uh, forgetting that it's a very serious matter to the people that are in the room. I wanted to send her a broom. I, I figured she could move around. At the easier next meeting, on her easier, room. yeah. Right, right. Um, I, I, I was. I'm, I'm looking at how. No wonder why we're in the position where everybody's in because uh, the the representatives 
they they're not doing their jobs they're not no they're not uh, proficient they're not uh, eloquent they're not uh, I, I, I'm, I'm I'm shocked I really am shocked this is this is what our taxes is paying well Come remember on, remember if you if you if you give them uh, uh, if when you're running for office if you promise people the world with a fence around it and they believe you you get elected and then the people that are the voters remember in inner cities they don't plow the streets uh, in in inner cities where they know there's no votes but they'll plow the street where all the voters are uh, they won't pick up uh, they won't clean up things in certain parts of the city if you're not a voter unfortunately they don't care about you unless you represent a vote well, talking about voters, um, it was the unions that got Malloy in. Yep. And this is to all of the unions. He did this to you and twisted it. Yep. You deserved it. Well. Because you didn't do your homework. Right. Right. And you hurt a lot of your people that give you the money and pay for your salary. And the people have got to pull together and go after you and tell you, you got to rattle this guy's cage because you're not doing your job. Well, you know, and what, and, you know, and that makes sense, Emmy. It makes sense. But I, one thing I've learned in my uh, 68 and almost 69 years on earth and having been active in politics and having my son uh, be a survivor, uh, what, I, what I have learned is they have an agenda, and it's a hidden agenda. And you and I never know what that agenda is. They know what it is, and it's usually follow the money, or it's usually I have my sights set on Washington, or I want to go higher up in the party because power, money, and ego are great aphrodisiacs. Once you've got them, you don't want to let them go, human nature being what it is. So we have five more minutes, and I'm going to let you have those. That's a long time, by the way, uh, when, we're, when we're on TV. So five more minutes, Emmy, and I'm going to let you say anything from your heart that you want to tell people. Do you have a date when, yet when, when we might be carrying our signs outside El uh, uh, So far, I know it's going to be on a Saturday. It's going to be on a Saturday. It's going to be in the morning, uh, and now we have to just pull all the TV stations together to, to agree on it. I have uh, sent... A letter to all the TV stations and asked if they would read it. Um, I'm in the process of sending a letter, um, which is on 12 TV stations in Connecticut that I that I got off the internet. Mm -hmm. There's 104 newspapers. Um, I've I've sent out to 75. I've got a, 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 another uh, 25 t to go. Asked them if they would uh, put my letter in the paper. Um, I've heard from four. Uh, newspapers that said, said they would put it in. Um, Malloy, we're not going into the night gracefully. Remember that. Um, I not only am going to get the voice of the parents at Grasso, but I will get the voice of the parents at uh, DSS. Right. Um, those those parents who are home, and there's over 2,000 of them, who are getting old and uh, are dying off and their children are going into emergency convalescent homes where they don't belong. Right. There's no room in the private sector to take a well, lot of these kids, so yeah. they're going to have to stay with the state. Um, wake up and smell the roses. You know, I would say with that, Emmy, I want all the mothers watching today, and fathers, and brothers, sisters, whatever, to say to themselves, can they imagine how you and I feel that when we get old, and we're not on this earth anymore, that we're going to go to our grave with fear of what's going to happen to our loved one, mm. who's going to take care of them, who's going to advocate for them, who in this world, what what aid will walk in that day and feel some empathy uh, for uh, our loved one when we're not there? What doctor? What anybody? My goodness, there's more empathy for puppies and kittens in this world than there are for human beings. And, and, and I love puppies and kittens. Don't get me wrong. I have two little dogs myself, and I treat them wonderfully. But I just want everyone out there to realize that your life can change in a nanosecond. Mm. Tomorrow you could wake up and be in our shoes 
and realize that you were once one of those people that you didn't give it a second thought. All you cared about was uh, the baseball game your kid is going to or whether he's got a uniform to wear, which is fine. I get it. I had children. But maybe you should care about something a little more than, than sports and, and ballet lessons and other things. Maybe you should put some effort and teach your children that maybe we should care about the least among us. How about visiting a convalescent home once Well, everybody while? feels it's not, it's not going to happen to me. No, that's and right. And as you know. It can. We found out the hard way. Yeah. And that is the day you lose your innocence about life, do you not? Yep. Yeah. That's the day you can, you can never go back. Unfortunately, it's a section of life that a lot of people don't know about. Thank God. Um, but when it happens, I thought I was standing alone. I'm finding out as I get older, there's a lot of us out there. Yes. A lot of us out there. That's right. And it's time for us to pull together. And it those is. who have been lucky enough not to get hit, they should walk in our shoes, they should understand, and they should go along with us. It's your rights that are being taken away. Stand up. Be and, counted. And Ellie, you had the last word, except because because now we're going to close the show. <laughs> I'm told I have to wrap it up. So you've had the last word as a guest. I just have to close the show. Ellie, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> I loved having you. We're, 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 we're soulmates here. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say to everyone, have a good evening and a better tomorrow. Good night. We did it.